Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you've never seen me before, then hi, welcome. First of all, before this video starts, I just wanted to like warn you that you may hear bird noises in the background, like those. It's a beautiful day, birds decided to stop by outside in the backyard. So I'm not gonna get bothered by it, I hope you don't get bothered by it, but yeah. Anyways, in today's video, you probably already know what I'm doing because you probably read the title, but I'm going to say it anyways. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys all about the 18 books I want to read before this year ends. I have been wanting to do this video for quite some time now, but I didn't have like a specific number in mind. But recently, I came across a TikTok sound and I made a TikTok about it. If you don't follow me on there already, then what are you doing? I'm just kidding. Don't do it if you don't want to. But I mean, I do post really fun beauty and book content on there, so... But anyways, yeah, so I made a video with that sound. It said there are supposedly 18 weeks left of 2023. That's like scary. I feel like this year has gone by so fast. Like literally time is insane to me right now. Like the concept of time, insane, wild. Cause like, I feel like everything's going by so fast. But <laughs> the rest of the sound said, so here are 18 books I want to read before this year ends. And coincidentally, my reading goal for this year is 50 books. And up until now, I have read 32 books. So I went on my calculator, subtracted, and to complete my reading goal, I have to read 18 books. So it like perfectly matches with the TikTok sound. And so then I was inspired to make it into a YouTube video, which is this, what I'm doing right now. But yeah, now let's get into it. So I kind of wanted to divide this into sections by book genres. Let's start with all the thrillers I want to read before this year ends. Okay, so starting off with Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. If you didn't know, this is the second book in a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. Read the first one, have a reading vlog on it if you haven't watched it. But yeah, so I basically gave the first book a five star rating loved it absolutely obsessed so immediately went to buy the second one and in this one by the premise on the back cover supposedly pip is not a detective anymore but she did release a true crime podcast with ravi i love that like i love true crime podcasts and so i'm just like really excited already to read this book so the podcast went viral but then someone goes missing the police are just like standing by not doing anything so of course she has to help and investigate and the person that went missing his name is jamie reynolds he disappeared on the same night the town hosted a memorial for the six year anniversary of the death of andy bell in sal Singh. so like it could be a coincidence more than that we don't know okay this sounds really interesting really excited already to read it following that there's a third book in the series and of course i had to put that book in this list too because after reading the second book i absolutely am gonna want to read the third one so it's called as good as dead i don't know much about like these books that i'm gonna be telling you about in this video so i'm mostly gonna be reading the premise on goodreads so pip is about to to go to college but supposedly something really like traumatic happened with her last investigation in this book it says here she's like haunted by it Ooh, okay so she's been getting a lot of online death threats which that's very sad and terrifying but there's like one anonymous person who keeps like asking her what's your favorite scary movie who will look for you when you're the one who disappears chills oh my gosh i would be so terrified what then she realizes someone is following her in real life this is like getting more crazy so she starts finding connections between her stalker and a local serial killer who was caught six years ago and then she starts wondering maybe the wrong man is behind bars but oh my gosh that premise is so much more interesting than the one of the sequel second book i'm so intrigued okay next thriller book i want to read is called wrong place wrong time the first line of the premise it's already really intriguing it says can you stop a murder after it's already happened so it says it's midnight on the morning of Halloween and this mother called Jen is waiting anxiously for her 18 year old son to return home and then he finally does but she's watching him from a window and she sees him stab a stranger now this is really interesting it says that when her son is taken into custody she like falls asleep but when she wakes up it's like yesterday so like the morning of Halloween, it's like the same day all over again. Interesting. So each morning when Jen wakes, she is for, oh, wait, I told you guys that I didn't even read the rest of the premise. No, okay. It's not that she's repeating the same day all over again. It says she wakes up, but further back in the past, first weeks, then years, 
before the murder. She realizes that somewhere in the past lies the trigger for her son's terrible crime. And her mission is to find it and prevent it from taking place. Wow, this is like a really interesting premise. I'm so intrigued right now. Next book is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. You've probably heard of this book already. It's pretty popular. And actually, I've had this like on my TBR for so long now. This is about a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And their first names are Adam and Amelia. And it says here things have been wrong with them for like quite some time now. But then they win a weekend away to Scotland. And so that's like what their marriage needs right now. Oh, and Adam has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize his friends, family or even his own wife that's insane and it also says every anniversary they exchange like traditional gifts and Amelia writes Adam a letter but she doesn't let him read it there's also a suspicion that this weekend away trip wasn't a coincidence at all and like one of them is lying I think I'm gonna say this for like every book but this premise is really interesting I just yeah I already know like which one of them is lying and like what's going on with their marriage and like what's in those letters like I'm just really intrigued okay so the next thriller is called The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager so it focuses on Casey Fletcher she's a widowed actress and trying to escape like bad press she goes to her family's lake house and to pass the time because she's bored she doesn't just read she doesn't just bake she has a pair of binoculars and she spies on like this couple who live in the house across the lake their names are Tom and Catherine Tom is rich and Catherine is a model but then Casey one day saves Catherine from drowning and they start developing a friendship and the more they get to know each other and the more Casey watches them together the more clear it becomes that something's not right and then Catherine disappears so Casey starts finding clues and just you know discovering the truth um I'm definitely invested already so yeah Excited to read it. And the last thriller I want to read before this year ends is The Housemaid by Freda McFadden. So it focuses on Millie and she's a recent parolee. She's also homeless and in need of a job. So she gets hired by Nina and Andrew as a live-in housemaid slash nanny and she thinks it's her dream job. It's perfect. This is also a very wealthy family so she's like awesome, great. But soon she realizes Nina is a difficult person to work with and there may be some other secrets there. Gotta be honest though the premise doesn't really sound that interesting but I'm still intrigued and I want to read it okay next genre is fantasy so I have only a couple but the first one is the ballad of never after by Stephanie Garber of course I already read the first book once upon a broken heart I also did a reading vlog on that if you want to check that out and I was equally as obsessed and wanted to keep reading more about Jax and Evangeline Fox so I'm really excited and I'm hoping I get like more of like Jax and Evangeline in this book although I was talking to a friend recently she's read this book already and she told me like the ending is pure pain and suffering and I'm like really scared but I'm excited and the next book is the third book in the series this hasn't even come out yet it's gonna come out very very soon and so of course I had to put it on this list because I know I know for a fact no matter how the second book ends I'm gonna keep wanting to read about them so this is a curse for true love blood will shed hearts will be stolen and true love will be put to the test in a curse for true love the breathlessly anticipated conclusion to the once upon a broken heart trilogy so that is the final book of the series no i don't know why that like one scares me and two makes me really sad because like i already like love these characters so much this world like everything about the series so and the last fantasy book I want to read before this year ends is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. First of all, I just want to say I put this in the fantasy genre because it is technically fantasy, but this is more dystopian fiction. If you didn't know, this is a prequel to the Hunger Games series. I read that also recently in a reading vlog for the first time ever. So again, if you want to watch that, I'm not going to stop you. This is a prequel. It doesn't have to do anything with those characters. Well, one president snow this is supposedly about like how he became really evil like how did he climb his way up to presidency and just like yeah like why he became the type of person he is and so that's really intriguing for me i hate president snow but i'm just like really intrigued to find out really like why did he become that person just like everything behind his thought process i really want to read it if i can before the movie even comes out so and of course the final genre is romance 
So the first one is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This book has become really popular really quickly. Part of the reason why I picked it up is because one, the cover, so cute. And two, because so many people have said this gives off like the biggest Gimmer Girls vibes set in a small town and just like so many other things. So that's like all I love in books. I love small town. I love Gilmore Girls. I love cute romances, but it says on the back that it's about a stranded pop star in a small town baker. Amelia is a pop star. She's like burned out from years of maintaining her princess pop image and to get away from that for a while, I'm guessing, she drives off in the middle of the night for a break in Rome. Rome, Kentucky. Noah Walker is the small town baker. He finds her on his front lawn in her broken down car and he makes it clear he doesn't have time or patience for celebrity problems. Oh my god. Are to lovers, you say? Aw, uh, and he runs like the pie shop his grandmother left him. That's so cute. Giving me like Harry when he worked in a bakery vibes. I don't know why. <laughs> But he lets her stay in his guest room until her car is fixed. Then she's on her own. Sure. Sure. Okay. This is so cute. I'm like so excited to read it. Okay, following that, it's not a series per se, but like there is a second book after that. I'm not sure like if it follows some characters mention that book specifically, but I have heard people like mention When in Rome and then mention this book as well. Again, not as part of a series, but like, I don't really know. I don't really know. But it's Practice Makes Perfect, also by Sarah Adams. I guess they're connected because like it's set in the same small town. But okay, so it follows Annie Walker. She owns a flower shop and she's looking for her perfect match. But then I'm guessing she's on a date and she overhears him say she's like really boring. Oh, so enter Will Griffin. So this is why it's also connected to When in Rome. Will is Amelia's bodyguard, remember? The pop star. But anyways, okay, so Will is trying to avoid Annie for some reason, I don't know. But Annie is kind of like asking him to help her with like finding her one true love. So then he agrees and then they start to fake date. So no one suspects they're actually dating when they go on their practice dates. But like the bodyguard with the small town girl vibe, I'm all for it. All for it. So I'm really excited to read it. Okay, the next one is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. So the only thing I know about this book, it has something to do with the concept of time. So it says it's about Clementine. And her aunt recently passed away. That was like the worst day of her life. So she's been trying since then to stay busy with work, to find love. But that's hard because she doesn't also want to get close to anyone. But then she finds a strange man standing in the kitchen of her late aunt's apartment. Oh, but he exists in the past, seven years ago to be exact. And she quite literally lives seven years in his future. What? That's really interesting and I'm also like really intrigued because like how are they gonna make it work like what's gonna happen here the next book is out on a limb by Hannah Bonham Young all I know about this book is it has a pregnancy trope I have personally never read a book with a pregnancy trope and although I haven't it doesn't sound like something I'd enjoy but I'm still gonna give this book a chance so it says it's about Winifred McNulty and she's always been very independent she's spent most of her life trying to prove that she can do it all on her own and she's done just fine until she has a one night stand with Bo, a perfect stranger and they decide to get to know one another as friends and nothing more but obviously that changes but um I don't know not that interesting of a premise but still gonna read it I hope next book is wildfire by Hannah Grace so it says it follows two camp counselors who reconnect after sizzling one night stand Russ and Aurora I love that name by the way I don't know just side note here Aurora slipped away before Russ even had the chance to ask for her full name. Okay, and then so they bump into each other on the first day of the summer camp where they're both counselors. And there's also this rule about no staff getting together, you know, dating. So that's gonna be hard for them if they want to start something again. I mean, not that they started something back in the past, but y you know what I'm saying. So again, I mean, not really intrigued by the premise, but still gonna give it a chance. We'll see. Next romance book is Before We Were Strangers by Rini Carlino. Now this book, I don't know anything about it, but I have a friend who loves it, absolutely loves it. And she's been telling me like, you have to read it. So now I have to read it before the year ends. Okay, and the premise is kind of like a letter, but it's about two young people. They met 15 years ago and then it all fell apart. They lost touch the summer after graduation. And she saw that person a month ago, like waiting for a train, but then the person didn't and realized it was the other person and then it was too late and they were gone and you know I'm guessing maybe that person is like gonna find 
the other person and things will go from there but I don't even know the names this is just like the premise on Goodreads I'm sorry if that was confusing but I definitely like the premise it's very interesting I'm excited to read it plus I trust my friends judgment so next book is the dead romantics by Ashley Poston as well so it's about Florence she's the ghost writer for one of the most prolific romance authors in the industry and she no longer believes in love after a terrible breakup so that's the problem and then her new editor who's a too handsome mountain of a man won't give her an extension on her book deadline but then she gets a phone call and she must quickly return home for the first time in a decade to help her family oh bury her beloved father then she finds a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door and he's confused she's there i definitely knew like this book was something related to ghosts but like a love story about ghosts i mean not that the main character is a ghost but the love interest anyways i'm really intrigued because like again how is this gonna end so definitely very invested in this story already okay we're almost done but the next book is what happens after midnight by k.l walther i read the summer of broken rules also by that author love that book but this book i saw sarah caroli read it in a reading vlog of hers she said good things about this book so put it on my tbr at first i thought it was like a thriller but then found out it was not it's a romance anyways it says it's focused on lily hopper and she has two more weeks until she's officially finished with boarding school and then she receives like this mysterious note inviting her to join the senior class prank the person who's like not directing but like planning the prank like in charge i guess his name is taggart he's her ex-boyfriend and his plan is to steal the school's yearbooks and it targets her prom date the senior class president daniel so it's like she can't back out now and it's kind of like an awkward situation she's like with her ex-boyfriend they're gonna prank like her prom date i'm like sensing it's gonna be like really fun i don't know if that's a thing with k.o walther's books but the summer broken rules just like had that element to it as well so really excited to read it and the last book of this video is you comma again I don't know I had to mention the comma but by Kate Goldbeck this cover is like giving fall vibes I also have just been seeing this book around on TikTok and like other places and yeah I just like why not put it on my TBR but I don't know anything about it so this is an enemies to friends to lovers trope so it's about Ari and Josh and it says when they first meet the wrong kind of sparks fly they hate each other instantly so Ari is a free-spirited struggling comedian she likes to keep things casual and Josh is very ambitious so he's a cook it says here he's like taking the culinary world by storm and then they like cross paths again years later and then it also says they've recently gone through breakups and surprisingly enough they start like becoming friends but, you know things start escalating they start spending more time with each other and yeah you can probably guess where that's going just like seeing it has at least an enemies to lovers trope i'm excited so those were all the 18 books i want to read before 2023 ends i hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you so much for watching and just because like i'm curious and i want to know tell me which books at least top three let's do that you want to read before this year ends and i guess that's all i have to say see you guys in my next video bye